Hey everyone, welcome back. There's been a lot happening with the channel, and it's so good to finally be back and producing content again. I'm excited to see what comes next, and I can't thank you all enough for tuning in for this long, and for your patience. To get you up to speed, the past few weeks, I, along with Jax from her channel Movie Myths and Monsters, have been rolling out Amber Heard's 2016 deposition during some live presentations. If you're wondering why she had to set for this deposition, when she first made her allegations against Johnny Depp in May of 2016, she requested a DVRO. She would not be granted one, instead receiving a TRO, or Temporary Restraining Order, until she set for a deposition and presented her case in court to attempt to receive the DVRO. After dodging a deposition a few times over the course of the summer, she signed the papers to drop her claims entirely, but before Johnny would sign, she had to set for a deposition first, then she promptly dropped her allegations immediately after. To break down the rather lengthy testimony, we are conducting the live presentations in parts, so far having completed three parts of what will likely end up being seven or eight in total. As we continue to present new parts of the depot, I'll be releasing what I refer to as volumes. Volume 1 will actually consist of the first two lives, combining the testimony into one long, uninterrupted video, so you can see it from start to finish in full HD without our faces on the screen or without commentary or lag or any other disruptions during it. If you want to jump ahead straight to the testimony, you can find it here, and I ask if you grab any of this or clip it or use it that you please credit my channel, as it would be greatly appreciated. Some may be wondering why I haven't shown this footage until now. Honestly, I was waiting for the trial to end, so these could be used to compare how Amber testified during the trial versus how she did in 2016, to see just how she reacted a few months after her initial allegations, before all the evidence, before all the allegations against her, a much more defensive and combative nature versus the traumatized one that would normally be expected or that she tried to demonstrate during the Virginia trial. So let's get to it. Feel free to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment telling me what you think about it. It all helps the channel, plus I love reading other people's ideas and points and gaining a new perspective. And remember to keep it respectful. Thanks again everyone, and here we go. Good morning, we're on the record. This is the recorded video deposition of Amber Laura Depp in the matter of petitioner Amber Laura Depp versus respondent John Christopher Depp II, taken on behalf of the respondent. This deposition is taking place at 2049 Century Park East, Los Angeles, California on August 13th, 2016, at approximately 10.01 a.m. My name is Stan Beverly. I'm the videographer with U.S. Legal Support, located at 11845 West Olympic Boulevard, Los Angeles, California. Video and audio recording yes. will be taking place unless all pa parties have agreed to off the record. Where are Charles and Lenny? Okay. Would all present please identify themselves? Yes, good morning. Uh, Blair Burke on behalf of respondent John, Johnny Depp. Hans Allhoff on behalf of respondent Johnny Depp. Laura Wasser on behalf of the respondent Johnny Depp. Samantha Klein on behalf of respondent Johnny Depp. Lisa Sutton on behalf of respondent Johnny Depp. Carrie Garvis Wright on behalf of respondent Johnny Depp. Patty Glazer on behalf of um, Mr. Depp. It being uh, 10.02, correct? Yes. We are, we are uh, ready to begin, and um, it appears that uh, petitioner Amber Laura Hurd has not shown up for the deposition ordered by the court uh, for today, nor has any of her legal representatives appeared. We can go off the record. The time is approximately 10.02 a.m. and we're going off the record.
surface. The time is approximately 10.07 a.m. and we're back on the record. Thank you, uh, Blair Burke, on behalf of respondent Johnny Depp, uh, it being 10.08, and we are now back on the record, having gone on the record at 10 a.m. for the court-ordered deposition of Amber Heard. Um, uh, Ms. Heard is apparently now here with her counsel, and if we could please have everyone introduce themselves. Charles Harder for Ms. Heard. Joseph Koenig for Ms. Heard. Samantha Spector for Ms. Heard. Chris O'Donnell for Ms. Heard. Leonard Levine for Ms. Heard. I'm sorry. The certified court reporter is Pam Felton. Would you please swear in the witness? Would you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly state the testimony you're about to give in this deposition? Would be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Hurd. Good morning. Ms. Hurd, I'm going to be asking you some questions today. Would you prefer that I call you Ms. Hurd or Ms. Depp or Amber? What would be your preference? Uh, Ms. Hurd is fine. Ms. Hurd? Okay, I will do that. Ms. Hurd, um, this is a proceeding in which you're about to give testimony, and it is known as a deposition. Do you understand? Our purpose in taking your deposition is to obtain the facts, the true facts, and information within your knowledge related to matters involved in this lawsuit or proceeding. We did not seek to trick or to trap you in any way. We do not wish to cause you discomfort. The person transcribing the deposition is a certified shorthand court reporter. At the onset, you will be placed under oath. Do you know what that means? Yes. Okay. You will then be asked questions which you are expected to answer fully and truthfully, under oath. Please do not guess. We request your best present recollection of the facts and events about which you will be questioned. We will presume, therefore, that whatever you testify to today is your best present recollection and not a guest. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Although this deposition is being held in the informality of these law offices, this deposition does have all the solemnity of courtroom testimony. Since you're under oath, your testimony here today will have the same force and effect and be subject to the same penalties as if you were testifying in a courtroom before a judge. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. If I might ask you not to nod your head, and instead answer yes or no, or however you wish to be responsive to my questions. Because we have a court reporter, she needs to understand what you're saying. Do you understand? I understand. OK. You're allowed to nod your head as well as say yes if you want to. I understood that as well. Yeah. Among such penalties to which you are going to be subject for the penalty of perjury, I want you to know the definition of perjury. Perjury is defined as willfully and contrary to an oath administered, stating as true a material fact which you know to be false. Perjury is a crime. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. By saying, okay. The penalties for perjury are set forth in the California Penal Code. Everything said during your deposition will be taken down and transcribed by the court reporter Every question we ask, every answer or comment you give, everything said by your attorney or this attorney or that attorney or that attorney or that attorney. You have, I think, five attorneys here. Um, everything said by any attorney will be duly transcribed. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. You've got six attorneys. If therefore, I'm sorry, Mr. Hardy, did you say something? Just noting for the record. Noting for the record what? How many attorneys you have and how many, or maybe you have seven. If it therefore is vital that if any time you do not hear or do not understand any question, Ms. Heard, you tell us at once so that we may have the opportunity immediately to repeat or rephrase a question to you. I understand. Obviously, if you do not promptly tell us otherwise, we'll have no choice 
but to presume that you did clearly hear and understand each question and that your answer to each question is based upon such complete and full understanding by you. All right, I understand. Please also remember that the court reporter can record the words of only one person speaking at a time. So allow time for the question fully to be completed before you begin to respond. <coughs> if you inadvertently are interrupted before you finish your answer, please tell me immediately. Otherwise, we will assume that your answer was complete and you had nothing further to say on the subject. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. And don't interrupt her also. Let the record reflect Mr. Harder interrupted uh, petitioner's que uh, respondent's questioning to say the statement, don't interrupt her also. The record already At the conclusion of this session, the reporter say. will transcribe what has been said into booklet form. You will have an opportunity to read that booklet and make any changes in the form of substance of the answer to any question you feel necessary. Be advised that at the time of this trial, you will be questioned before a judge as to why you made such changes. And we will contend at trial that your memory and recollection here today are good, as good or better than at any later time. Can you think of any reason why you would be unable to provide me with accurate and comprehensive answers today? No, I cannot. However, I do have a question. I didn't want to interrupt you while you were, um, while you were saying. I have a question Please. about that. Please. What, what do you mean by, uh, by um, having to go back and, 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 and ch or having the option to go back and change um, anything I say, why would, why would I do, why would I do that? The um, is, it, is it about re perhaps remembering one of Pierce's uh, partners, huh? one of Pierce's partners from Greenberg? Yeah. So can you please um, can you please repeat that? Uh, last sure, few lines? I'm happy to and clarify. Thank you. At the conclusion of this session, the reporter will transcribe what has been said into booklet form. You, Ms. Hurd, will have an opportunity to read that booklet, that transcript, and make any changes in the form or substance of the answer that you give here to any okay. question that you feel necessary. You should know that at the time of trial, you will be asked before a judge as to why you made any changes, and we, our position, will be that your memory and recollection today are as good or better than at any later time. Do you understand now? Until I approve the booklet, yes. Is that, is that my, is that the correct? Would you like a moment to speak with your counsel, Ms. Hurd? I'll just, I'd, I'd just like to say something. The point is you want to be as uh, thorough as you can mm -hmm. as to the question and accurate as you can so that you don't need to make any changes. You want to be as, sure. as complete in this record as possible. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Can you think of any reason, Ms. Hurd, why you would be unable to provide me with accurate, truthful, and comprehensive answers today? No. Okay. Have you ingested any alcoholic beverage in the last 24 hours? No. Okay. Have you ingested any alcoholic beverage in the last 30 days? I'm going to object. I instruct you not to answer. I don't think it's relevant. I think it's in Baser privacy. Don't answer it. Are you going to answer my question, Ms. Hurd? I'm going to take um, my uh, counsel's advice. Okay. Ms. Hurd, have you ingested any amphetamine called Provigil in the next, uh, last 24 hours? I'm going to object, um, but I'll allow you to answer. If what you does want. that mean? I'm going to state an objection for the record. I think it invades privacy. I think it's irrelevant, but I'm not going to instruct you not to answer. Oh, it's I up see to what you. You're saying. Um, I take um, I take my medicine as prescribed by my doctor every day. Does your answer mean that the truth is that you have taken the amphetamine provigil 
in the last 24 hours. I'm also going to object uh, vague and ambiguous and assumes facts not in evidence and calls for a legal conclusion on the characterization of, of, the of the medication because you keep calling it an amphetamine but I'm not a doctor and I don't know if that's accurate or not. I, I in fact don't even know what it is. Um, Let exactly. me assure you Miss Hart it is an She was in the process Sorry, of... Sorry, interrupt me. <laughs> yeah, that's, so that's what I was getting at Blair because you instructed her to be sure to give a complete answer but yet you're in interrupting her and that's a problem for me and for her. Well, yeah, it's a problem for me too, so let me very clearly and unambiguously apologize to you, Ms. Hurd. I did not intend to interrupt you. I want you to be, be able to give full and complete statements, okay? I would like to. Have you taken the drug Provigil in the last 24 hours? I have taken my medication as per my doctor's instructions. When you refer to medication, yes. is that medication to which you refer the drug Provigil? I take all prescribed medication as prescribed to me by my doctor. And I think my medical, um, uh, I think my medical, uh, my medical advice for my doctor is private. Let the record reflect that the and uh, any medication. petitioner, Ms. Hurd, has not responded to the question. On behalf of Mr. Depp, we will move to strike as non-responsive. I'm just going to object. I, I think your last sentence is unnecessary. I think, Blair, honestly, you're being harassing to this witness intentionally. You're trying to rattle her. Um, she, whatever she says, she says. Whatever the record is, it is. You don't need to make your own commentary every time she gives an answer, and I think that's harassing and it's bothersome. I can assure I, you, Ms. Mr. Harder, thank you for your comments. I can assure you I have no intention to harass Ms. Hurd. I asked her a direct question to which her response unfortunately compelled me to make an objection for the record because it was non-responsive. I will ask again. Ms. Hurd, in the last 24 hours, have you ingested the drug Provigil? I uh, apologize if you feel I did not answer your question. I feel as though I attempted to answer your question as best as I could while maintaining the integrity of my private medical information. Okay, we'll just leave it at that. You've asked it three times. And I also, um, do not feel comfortable with how, what do you want me to call you uh, Blair I'm sorry I didn't ask you that would be fine let's go with, Ms. Let's go with Ms. Burke Ms. Burke okay um, Ms. Burke I feel the way that you characterized it was um, uh, perhaps uh, I felt uncomfortable with how you characterized it it's my medical um, history and I feel there's um, something private and personal about that and I also um, want to protect the integrity of my um, personal medical uh, information. However, for the record, I would like to say I take my medication as prescribed by my doctor and nothing else. Let the record reflect that on behalf of respondent Mr. Depp, we would object. The client, the, the petitioner has uh, been <coughs> speaking for a number of seconds now, not in response to any question posed, and we would move to strike uh, anything she said after the last refusal to answer the question. And um, Ms. Hurd, I would like to ask you about any other medications you've ingested in the last 24 hours. Okay. Are you finished or are you going to keep? It sounded like you were almost finished and maybe you weren't. I didn't mean to interrupt. Counsel, if you do not have an objection oh, I do. or an instruction to I your do. client, could you please remain silent? Uh, I thought you were done, Blair, and then it sounded like you maybe weren't done. I was trying to get in an objection. My objection is this. Um, I'm going to object on grounds of privacy and confidentiality. There's not a protective order here. Her medical history is not at issue in the case. Um, she feels uncomfortable telling you about her medical history. Um, you may have to make a motion to compel if you want to get into medical history. I think we should just move on and let's 
let's talk about the issues in the case. I would ask that counsel, uh, for the record, make no speaking objections. Uh, and if there is an illegal objection, I invite counsel to make it for the record. But um, I would also ask, um, uh, I don't want to assume, Mr. Hurd, but will you be defend, I'm sorry, yeah. Freudian slip. Uh, would you, uh, for the record, uh, would you be defending Ms. Hurd as her attorney in these proceedings? I'm defending her right now. Okay. I just want to make clear, I, I will assume that any and all legal objections will be made by you today and well, not any I, of the other seven lawyers. No, uh, you uh, actually here. said earlier that all the things that everyone says on the record is going to be part of the record. So Right. I'm asking just so that we can have a, a clear record and any appropriate objections can be made that Ms. Hurd pick one lawyer from her team to defend her in this deposition and make for the record any legal objections. Okay, that is my request. I understand your request. I will be making objections. If anyone else feels that they need to make an objection, I'm going to let them speak for themselves. Ms. Hurd, have you ingested in the last 24 hours any non-prescribed medications? No. Ms. Hurd, have you ingested in the last 24 hours powder cocaine? No. Harassing. Ms. Hurd, can you tell us uh, as you sit here, um, the, and, and let me explain, it is very common in these proceedings that we just determine whether you have had any drugs or alcohol, sure. whether anything would affect your ability to tell the truth today sure. or impair your ability to tell the truth, okay? okay. So, um, and she's a answered all those questions. Okay. She's answered about medication. She's answered about non-medication. She's answered about is she capable of giving her best testimony. You've already covered all that. It's harassing at this point that you keep going over and over and over the same grounds. Mr. Harder, are you making a legal objection? Yes. Okay. It's Could harassing. you make that? I said harassing, but I don't think that you got my message, so I wanted to be a little clearer. Mr. Harder, you continue to make speaking objections which are inappropriate and improper in these proceedings. I will ask you once again to refrain from doing so. And I will ask you, Ms. Hurt, one more time to answer my question. Could you tell us if you have ingested any medication whatsoever in the last 24 hours? Objection. Invades privacy confidentiality, irrelevant, harassing, asked and answered many times now. Those are all legal objections. Um, Ms. Burke, I have, um, I feel I have answered your question. Um, I have uh, taken absolutely nothing that is illegal or that should impair or alter my ability to engage in um, and be fully present and confident during today's discussion. Sorry, can you not hear me, Blair? I just want to make sure you heard me. It seemed like you were talking. Did you hear me? Ms. Hurd, did you receive a deposition subpoena to be at these offices yesterday at 10 a.m. for a court-ordered deposition? What do you mean by that? Were you aware that you were ordered by the court to be in these offices for a court order deposition yesterday at 10 a.m.? No, she didn't, she didn't receive anything. I didn't. We, we went in on an ex parte application, and, I and the court ordered it, and she was advised of the court's order. There, she didn't receive a deposition subpoena. Objection. It appears that another individual representing Ms. Hurd is now testifying for Ms. Hurd. The individual has Hurd, a name. His name is Mr. And Connick. I would ask that anything that was just said be stricken as non-responsive and move to strike as non-responsive Ms. Hurd's answer. Ms. Hurd, I asked you a question about whether you were aware you were supposed to be here in these offices yesterday at 10 o'clock for a deposition. I'm, I'm going to object on grounds of privilege. If you learned of anything through communications of counsel, it's privilege, and I instruct you not to answer. Ms. Hurd, 
Can I hear your answer to my question? I instruct you not to answer. If you learned from counsel. Ms. Hurd, was it your understanding that you had a scheduled deposition yesterday? If your understanding was from communications with counsel, I instruct you not to answer its privilege. Ms. Hurd, did you communicate with Jody Gottlieb yesterday? I believe I did. I believe so. What did you say to Jody Gottlieb when you communicated with her? Uh, I don't remember what we talked about. We talked about, um, well, we talk about many things, Jody and I. Of the many things you talked about with Jody Gottlieb yesterday, could you tell me one thing you talked about with her? It misstates her testimony. <clears throat> you can answer. Although I believe it's been asked and answered. She said, I don't recall. But if, if you now recall, go ahead. I, I don't recall the specifics. To answer your question, um, Ms. Burke, I don't remember specifically what we talked about. We speak often and text often. Um, when I say speak, I'm including um, uh, text messages. I don't actually think I spoke on the phone with her. I meant I communicated with her. Um, uh, did but you I don't remember exactly uh, about what. Did you, uh, do you still have those text messages? You mean on my phone yes. or on my device? I'm sure I do. Okay. Did you bring your phone with you today? Uh, it might be in the car. Okay. Um, would you be able to retrieve your phone if we took a quick break? If I'm going to object to that. Okay. Let the record reflect that counsel is instructing his client not to retrieve the requested evidence. Um, I just said I'm going to object to that. Ms. Ms. Hurd, um, did you preserve all of your communications with Ms. Uh, Gottlieb from yesterday? Objection, vague and ambiguous is the term preserve. I'm happy to rephrase. Have you destroyed or deleted any of the text messaging you referred to earlier that you undertook with Ms. Gottlieb yesterday? No. So every communication you had with her by text is still on your phone? Every commute. What do you mean by from every yesterday? Commu from yesterday? Yes. I'm sure it is, unless. Um, yes, I'm sure it is. I can't imagine why it wouldn't be. I don't know what that one is. Okay. Um, were you informed? I'm sorry. I was just going to ask if I could please have some water. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Can we get a little water? Are you ready to go forward? Yes, of course. Okay. Were you aware uh, that you were asked to bring documents today in response to a deposition subpoena for records? No, I, I was not instructed to. Don't don't disclose communications with counsel. When you say oh, you I, were I have the documents. We have, we have I mean, documents. All the documents that we're producing in connection with the uh, notice of deposition. Can we have them, please? Sure. Thank you. Let the record reflect that I'm providing all documents that were requested pursuant to the notice of deposition for my client, Amber Heard. Let the record reflect that Ms. Spector provided me with about a two-inch stack of documents that are in no particular order that I can see. We will go through them and we will determine whether they are responsive <coughs> to the document production request. Ms. Hurd, were you asked uh, to provide any copies of text messages that you had uh, in your possession for these proceedings? I'm going to instruct you not to answer if you learned anything from counsel. It's privileged. I will take my counsel's advice. Ms. Hurd, were you, was it your understanding that in conjunction with your deposition, your understanding, what you understood to be true, that you needed to provide the text messages uh, between you and other people related to these matters. If you developed your understanding from communications with counsel, it's privileged and I instruct you not to answer. Yeah. Oh, that's what I, how else would Did I? Did you say something, Ms. Hurd? You said, how else would I? Did you uh, provide any text messages to your attorneys 
in response to anything uh, that was asked of you in these proceedings? It's privileged. Anything that you give to your attorneys, anything your attorneys give to you, words that are said, okay. written, oral, any of that, it's all privileged. You can't answer. I would object again to uh, counsel uh, testifying and uh, continuing to articulate speaking objections. And I want to make clear, Ms. Hurd, I'm not asking about anything anybody said to you. I'm asking about what you believed you were doing and what you understood you needed to do. Did you ever have an understanding that you needed to provide texts, copies of texts that you had undertaken between you and John Depp? It's the same question and it's the same instruction. If your understanding is based upon communications with counsel, it's privileged and you cannot answer. <coughs> Ms. Hurd, have you preserved all of your text messages uh, in conjunction with this matter? Objection is to the term preserved. And as to the term all, and as to the term this matter, it's vague and ambiguous for numerous reasons. Ms. Hurd, are you going to answer my question? I would like to know what you mean. I, I would like to know, sorry. No, go you, ahead, please. Uh, Ms. Burke, I don't know what you mean by um, preserve. Because uh, does that mean keep, save, um, uh, does it... Does it mean intentionally, unintentionally? Um, Very good. I want to make sure you understand what the definition of preserve is. I understand the definition in, okay. um, in normal context. In this specific I meant it in normal context. In this context, um, uh, I, I don't actually know what you mean. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Since you filed for dissolution uh, mm -hmm. from Mr. Depp, on May 23rd, 2016, have you deleted any communications in text form between you and any other person? No. Okay. Have you, since you filed for dissolution in this matter, May 23rd, deleted any emails between you and any other person? Yes. Okay. My inbox fills up and um, I'm told that it is um, best to delete messages you don't need anymore. Um, um, I mean, everybody deletes their emails. Have you deleted since May 23rd any emails you received or sent to Jody Gottlieb? Not to my knowledge. I don't remember uh, doing that. Have you deleted since May 23rd any emails you sent or received to Raquel Pennington? No, not intentionally, not to my knowledge. I don't remember. When you say in response to my question, not intentionally. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you may have deleted emails between you and Rocky Raquel Pennington? I, I'm just going to object because I believe her answer was more than what you just said. So you're mischaracterizing her response. She said no, not to my knowledge, and then she said more. So you're leaving that part out, which I think is the first and most important part of it. Meaning I have not d deleted anything um, relating to uh, this matter for mm -hmm. any intentional purposes or reasons other than um, just the normal. When you are done communicating with someone and they send you an email, you don't need that email anymore and you erase it. It's space in your inbox. Does your answer mean, Ms. Heard, that you may have deleted emails between you and John Depp, or you and Rocky um, Pennington, or you and Jody Gottlieb, um, because you felt like you didn't need them anymore. Okay, I'm, I'm going to object. It misstates her prior testimony. It's very compound. Mm -hmm. It's vague and ambiguous. 
Miss Hurd, did you not understand my question? No, I understood, but I agree with my counsel. Well, if you understood my question, can you answer my question, please? I agree. I understood your question, but I agree with my counsel <laughs> and understand his advice as it relates to it. Well, it's, your counsel. It's not advice. It's just an objection for the record. <laughs> and and it's, it was also asked and answered. You previously asked. I agree. Ms. Hurd, were you, was it your understanding that you were to provide uh, copies of any of uh, photographs requested. Uh, sorry, if you learn from counsel's privilege, instruct not to answer. Maybe we could make a general objection that if you hear it, if you've heard anything or understand anything from counsel, Ms. Heard, that you don't have to answer that question because it's privileged. No, let's have an understanding that you're going to stop asking or for privileged information, and then I don't need to make the objection. She's not Let because. Because you need to calm down, Mr. I'm Harder. fine, thank you. Okay. Mr. Harder looks I'm fine. happy, I am happy to make clear that I'm asking, as I have been consistently for about the last 10 minutes, Ms. Hurd to tell me about what her understanding and was. And it's privileged. Which is clearly not privileged. Yes, it is. If she learned from okay. counsel, it is privileged. Let if you want to go to the court and brief it, we can do that. But you're asking her to give you what communications between counsel are, which develops an understanding. So that's privileged. Ms. Hurd, were you aware that on May 20, 2016, your husband, Johnny Depp's mother died? Uh, vague as to time. On May 20, 2016, were you aware that your husband, Johnny Depp's mother, had died? Was I, um, so I understand, are you asking me if I knew on that date or if, sorry, I'll wait till you're done. No, you um, don't have to wait. Oh. Well, it's distracting for her, obviously. And I, I just want you to hear my answer. I am listening and, it, and, and I invite you to answer my question. We'd love to. Um, I have a question, though, so that I understand and can answer. Maybe when we're on a break, you can ask your counsel. I but wanted to ask you a question. Can you answer my question? I'm trying to. Okay, what's your question? Um, I don't understand what you mean. I didn't quite get that. <laughs> so you and Siri don't understand what I mean <laughs> when I ask you if you knew on May 20 that your husband's mother had died. Are you okay. asking me if I knew? On that date, or if I if I know she died on that date, that's what my let's I'm start. To clarify. Let's start, Miss Heard. Did you know at any time on May twenty that your hus that your husband's mother had died? I do not recall when I was made aware of that fact, nor do I recall what the date was that she actually passed away. Okay, that's why I, I mm -hmm. want to clarify. Okay, am I correct, Miss Heard, that on May twenty? You had already um, contacted a divorce lawyer? Um, I don't remember the date that I first contacted a divorce attorney. And it's privil well. Is it your testimony here today that you do not remember when you contacted a divorce attorney? Yes, off the top of my head, I do not remember when the first time I contacted a divorce attorney was. Okay. Uh, was it before, to your memory, was it, do you remember when you learned Mr. Depp's mother had died? I Vague don't, and ambiguous. I don't remember the date that I, that I received this information. Um, I know I learned about it from my parents on a text message, but I don't know what date that was off the top of my head. Okay. Do you still have that text message? I don't see why I wouldn't. Is that yes? It's exactly what I said. I don't, I, I, I'm sure I do. I don't know why I wouldn't. If asked to provide that text message, would you agree to do so? I, I'm going to object. Don't answer and we'll okay. deal with it in the c normal course, which is you make a request for production and then we respond to it. Anytime they ask for information, that's the protocol. Okay. If I could ask you, if you did not delete that text message, I would ask you to keep or preserve it. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Would you do that? Yes. Okay. 
Ms. Hurd, I want to talk to you about the uh, events first, immediately after uh, May 21. As you sit here today, do you have a very clear memory of the events of May 21? Are you asking me if I had if I have a clear memory of it? That's exactly what I'm asking you. Vague and ambiguous as to the year, and vague and ambiguous as to which events you're referring to, because in 24 hours, a lot of events can occur. Vague and ambiguous. Ms. Hurd, did you understand when I said May 21, what year I was referring to? No, not until. Okay. Not until what? Not until uh, it was just made clear. And what, what do you understand now after your attorney speaking I was referring to? Yes, I am clear as to what date you mean. Okay. And what date do I mean? May 21st, 2016. Thank you. Do you have, as you sit here today, a clear recollection of events on that day? Uh, it's, it's vague and ambiguous. It's compound. <laughs> there are a lot of events that happen. Ms. Hurd, do you remember event. anything that happened on May 21? I do. Um, I remember when Johnny smashed the phone into my face. Objection, non-responsive, move to, to strike. I, uh, my question to you was, do you remember anything from May 21? Do you? Uh, wait, hang on. You asked her a question, she answered it, and now you're moving to strike her answer. That's ridiculous. You can't do that. Is that an objection, Mr. Yes, Hurd? I'm objecting to you moving to strike when she gives you an answer that's responsive to your question. Ms. Hurd, I'm asking you a yes or no question. Do you remember anything that happened on May 21st, 2016? Argumentative that. and harassing. I answered that question. And was that yes? I answered your question already. Okay. Yes. Am I correct that on May 22nd, 2016, you signed documents for dissolution of your marriage? Yes. Calls for legal clear. Was that yes? Yes. Okay. Um, when you signed those documents for <coughs> dissolution of your marriage, was that before or after you went to a birthday party? Vague and ambiguous. I don't, I don't remember. You don't remember what, Miss Hurd? I don't remember if it was before or after the birthday party. You went to a birthday party on Sunday, uh, May 22nd, correct? I did. Uh, that's Sunday. Yes, I went to a birthday party on Sunday uh, for my friend Amanda uh, because I was responsible for bringing her birthday cakes as per her husband's request. That was. Just and stick to the question. You sorry. don't need to. Um, but I, I, I just wanted to point out that um, it was my job to bring a special kind of cake. Okay. Thank you for telling me about the special cake. My question to you was, did you sign documents for dissolution of your marriage before or after you went to the birthday party? Again, I don't, I, I don't remember. Okay. Uh, what will be marked as uh, Respondents A? Do you recognize this picture? I do. Okay. And is that a picture of you at this birthday party? Yes, it is. Okay. Do you have any cakes in your hand? That's in come this on. picture? <laughs> I yes. Don't, I don't know. She doesn't had. show her hands. It's if you know, Ms. Harassing. Harassing. Yes. Harassing. I don't, um, I don't know if there's cake in my hand at this moment. Okay. I okay. do okay. not. Before, but, be before uh, you but the birthday party lasted for a few hours, and um, actually I was there for many hours, so I don't know if uh, at what point I held cakes or... The question was about this photo at this I moment. I remember this moment because we had to place hair over my eye to cover my black eye and there everybody at that party 15 people at that party objection of motion to stop, strike stop interrupting the witness please I can only do one at a time you asked let her finish her answer you please. asked me specifically to not interrupt so I would appreciate the same go ahead I please, I'm, please I'm, finish I am, your um, answer I would like to finish my answer if that's okay sure. thank you um, I remember this photograph okay. because we had to place hair over my eye um, that I typically get hidden 
uh, hit on or hit, yeah, hit on um, because of uh, the nature of, uh, I guess this would it be a right hook? Um, but I specifically had hair placed over my eye to cover a bruise and swelling and scratches on that side of my face from the cell phone incident when Johnny smashed a cell phone into my face. So my friends here in this picture took effort, great effort, to make sure hair was covering my eye as to not set off media attention and media storm. Are you finished, Ms. Heard? Yeah. With that answer, yes. Objection, non-responsive, move to strike the entirety of Ms. Heard's answer. And I'm just going to say all these motions to strike are ridiculous, and we will take them up with the court. We'll go off the record you, at this time. The question, before we go off the record, yes, the question, sorry, yes, microphone, microphone. the question so had we to. We don't have to go off the record. We have the to question the had to do. I can only take one person at a time. The question had to do with this photograph, and the answer had to do with this photograph. We don't have to go off the record if we choose not to. We're not going off the record. We're staying. Okay. We'll stay here. We're direct. We're still on the record. He's still rolling. Yep. All right. Great. <coughs> You're still on camera, so. Okay. Huh? I understand. Yeah, I remember this. In okay, fact, don't don't do talk though. Okay. <laughs> okay. Love you. All right. That's fine. <laughs> We're still on the record. Ms. Hurd, uh, let the record reflect that Ms. Hurd has left the deposition table and um, we're still on the record. Let the record reflect that all of the defense counsel walked out of the room for several minutes and Ms. Hurd stepped up for less than a minute. She's coming right back. To get a water. To get, get a, a bottle of water. water. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't want to keep you waiting. No question. <coughs> Thank you. For the record, um, Mr. Harder, I would like you to be aware that if this inappropriate and, and improper uh, making of speaking objections continues by you, if this coaching the witness through your speaking objections and your testimony in these proceedings continues by you. We will have no choice but to stop these proceedings and seek relief from the court by filing of in limine motions. I would just like to make clear I have not testified at all, so what you just said is incorrect. My speaking objections are only when you are unclear about my legal objections because you keep asking the same things over and <coughs> over and it seems like I'm not being clear and so I just want to be clear. In no way am I being obstructive at all. In no way am I interfering with your deposition at all. And I also find your questioning to be highly problematic and I need to be able to have a clear record as to why I feel that way 
and we reserve the right to file in limine motions uh, in connection with your questioning. Are you finished, Mr. Hart? I am, and I think I went on about the same amount of time that you did. Ms. Hurd, on May 22, 2016, before or after you attended the birthday party for, to which you referred previously, at any time during that day, did you go to the police? No, I did not. I did not go to the police. Okay. At the time you first uh, filed, when did you uh, file your action for dissolution in this case for your divorce against Mr. Depp? Calls for a legal conclusion. I, be I believe it was on. I believe it was on the following day, on on Monday. But that's my my oh, maybe. The next day, I don't recall the exact date. Okay. Prior to filing that action, am I correct? You communicated at some point prior to the filing of that action with your publicist, Jody Gottlieb. Vague and ambiguous. I don't remember. I don't remember every time we text uh, the date okay. of, the, of those texts. Okay. Do you have any of those texts with Jody Gottlieb from May 21 or May 22? I don't know why I wouldn't. Okay. Could you do me a favor and preserve or keep those texts for me? Sure. Thank you. Um, did you communicate, do you remember communicating with Ms. Godley before you filed your papers in court? Vague and ambiguous. Vague as time. If you say it was May 23rd, 2016? That would be Monday. Oh, okay. Prior um, to that, did you communicate with Ms. Godley <coughs> about the filing of your papers? I believe so. Okay. What did you discuss? I, I don't remember all of our discussions and what they entailed. Okay. I hear you say you don't remember all of your discussions. Could, could you tell us what you do remember? I remember, I remember having a phone call with Jody. And do you remember what you discussed? Uh, I remember part of what we discussed. Could you uh, share that with us? I, uh, I believe I called her and said, uh, Jody, I'm going to have to file for a divorce and I'm told that it will be, it's forced to be, uh, or it could become public record, uh, or it could become out in the public because of the nature of how the uh, filing of such paperwork it, um, demands and because I was told that there was a possibility for it to uh, get out in the public I needed her to know that I was going to file and I told her listen um, I have uh, unfortunately kept something from you um, and it's something I've been dealing with for a few years and all of those times when I would um, text you about falling down the stairs or having accidents, unfortunately, it's, it's uh, been a secret that I've been trying to fix and keep and hide um, um, to protect myself and to protect Johnny. Um, and I've been living in this situation where um, uh, I've been in a violent relationship and all of those times when we would talk about my bruises and things like that, that the, the black eyes, the um, busted lip uh, uh, cover-ups that we had to do with um, makeup, to uh, red carpet, you know, makeup attempts to try and hide like the scarring I got from Australia when Johnny was holding me down on the glass table with the, all the broken glass and I had all these bad scars on my um, arms and I was worried about that for the red carpet. Um, I'd I said all of those times um, uh, I, I, I've been covering up this, this, this secret part of my life, which is that I've been living um, with Johnny and, and it's been really, uh, I've been living in a very violent relationship and he's been hitting me and I, um, yesterday um, or day before, 
some days before um, Johnny came over to talk and we we're supposed to just talk about his mom. Um, I wanted to be there, but I still wanted to have some protection from him. So I, I asked if Johnny come over in the daytime when it was most likely that he was sober. And um, he um, threw uh, his cell phone into my face. And I'm going to have some markings on my face, or I have markings on my face. And I don't know how much the bruising is going to go down, but I really need to go file for a restraining order so that I can have some protection. I can change the locks. I'm told that this gives me a little bit more protection because I'm still living in his house. And she, um, I remember the phone call um, with her because she got sick to her stomach. And she said, she was at a play, and she said, I'm sorry, I have to step out. I feel sick to my stomach. And I said, I'm really sorry. I've been keeping this for me. And that's what I remember. Okay. And she said um, that she was really sorry that she didn't ask me more questions about all those times. And that she was there for me and that she was giving me on the next flight home. Okay. And, and this was, um, to your memory, do you remember if it was before or after the birthday party we referred to a few minutes ago? Um, um, the birthday party I know was on a Sunday. Yeah, so then it was probably maybe Sunday night, if I. But that is my estimate. I'm. I, I don't have confirmation. I could probably okay. find out for sure. But uh, is it fair to say, under any circumstances prior, you were having this conversation prior to the filing of your your divorce action in court on Monday? Correct. The, this conversation I had with her was before the court filing because I think I called her to. T I think I called her to tell her. Yes. That I wanted her to be prepared that I was going to file because it, I was anticipating that it would be come public record or had the potential to become public and I wanted her to be aware since she handles um, uh, my, uh, public, um, my publicity. Okay. And um, so prior to when the dissolution action was filed, that was, you say Monday, you think? I, I, I believe so. I, I, don't, I don't recall exactly. Okay. Um, would it be true to say that, that on Sunday, when you were having this telephone conversation with uh, Jody, would it be accurate to say that you were petrified of Johnny? Big and ambiguous. Do you understand what the word petrified means? Yes, I understand what that word means. Um, I just want the truth. On Sunday, is it true to say, Sunday, May 22nd, 2016, that you were petrified of your husband, Johnny Depp? Vague and ambiguous is the term petrified word. <clears throat> I would like to say that I was scared of the um, side Oh, petrified is the word you would like to use? Well, I'm only using it, Ms. Depp, because you placed it in your sworn uh, declaration in this matter, seeking a restraining order. Mm -hmm. So I assumed that you understood the word. Do you understand the word? I understand the <coughs> word. But again, I answered that once, but I will answer again. Okay. I understand petrified. Okay. On Sunday, May 22nd, as you were having this telephone conversation with Ms. Gottlieb, is it truthful to say you were petrified of your husband, Johnny Depp? I was petrified of the monster, as we like to call him. Johnny and I refer to his other personality, his, the part of him that is present when he beats me up that monster we call the monster and have called the monster for years and that other half of him that other part of him is the the per, the, the the part of him the him uh to whom i would i would say i was petrified of whom i would say i was petrified i would kindly ask you whether that answer means yes you were petrified or no you were not petrified of johnny depp on may 22nd 2016. Ask and answer. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, again, um, I was petrified 
yes, I was petrified of the monster, the part of Johnny that <coughs> beat me up and did Okay. on many occasions. I just want to be clear, Ms. Hurt. Yes, you were petrified of the monster, and that monster was your husband, Johnny Depp. Is that correct? It's Again, I said it, it, it was the part of him that would beat me up that I was afraid of. The other part of Johnny is a very nice guy and one that I actually was able to live with and tried to salvage uh, through many different attempts to get him sober, to get him help, to get his family involved, to get him clean and sober and to protect the part of Johnny that is wonderful and is not the monster that has blackouts and that has rage and doesn't remember and beats me up and has paranoid delusions and uses and almost kills himself when he does. That part, the one I have been trying to salvage out of him, the good part of him, is the one to whom I'm not afraid. The one I'm afraid of is the one that we call the monster. And they both reside in him. Objection, non-responsive, move to strike. Ms. Objection, Hurt. it's highly responsive, Ms. and I oppose that motion to strike. <laughs> I don't understand. Don't worry about Ms. it. Ms. Hurt. Neither does your lawyer. She doesn't well, like your answer, so she's trying to wipe it out. No, that I understand. But yeah, that's all you need to know. And I'm just, for the record, yeah. I'm just letting the record know that you were responsive. I feel I'm responding to you in the most honest way possible. And I know that it's nuanced. Hum human beings are nuanced and complex. And I'm, I'm speaking to you from my heart. And I'm, I apologize if it is not clear enough for you. Just wait for a question. Objection to Mr. Harder's testimony and statements. Not a testimony. And Ms. Hurd's last testimony and statements as non-responsive move to strike. Ms. Hurd, on May 22, 2016, is it true or untrue that you were terrified of John? Asked and answered. Um, can you repeat the question? On May 22nd, 2016, is it true or untrue that you were terrified of Johnny? On May 22nd? Yes. On May 22nd, I was absolutely terrified of the man that we called the monster, the version of Johnny Depp, the part of Johnny Depp that could, that acts erratically, unpredictably, that has severe drug and alcohol problems and that could beat me up and hurt me and not even mean to at times. That part of him I was terrified and yes, also petrified. That part of him I became increasingly scared of because the behavior prior to May 22, 2016 had grown increasingly erratic and unpredictable. I was so terrified that I, um, days prior, went and sought advice from a friend who has lived through domestic violence as to what I could legally do to protect myself because I lived in this house and I didn't even know if I could do something like change the locks and I didn't know under what circumstance what substances he was on, uh, what particular mix or cocktail he was on, because those mix, those cocktails change, change quite often with Johnny. And I didn't know if this month it was um, cocaine and ecstasy, if it quaaludes, or if it was other things like that. I didn't know what combo he was on, and that definitely affects the behavior of this, of the monster of Johnny Depp. And. I didn't know what he was on or what his behavior, what he was capable of doing. So the month leading up to this, because we had limited to, to no contact prior, I didn't know what to expect. Let the record reflect that Mr. Harder's using his hands splayed flatly above the table to instruct the witness not to answer or to stop talking. That's completely false. That's absolutely I, I, I and completely false. I agree. Um, I did not actually receive any indication. Uh, Ms. Hurd, I don't, I, excuse me, I don't want to interrupt, but you, oh, you haven't, go ahead. there's not a question pending, okay? Sorry, so what, what does that mean? You wait for the next question. Okay. Okay. Uh, so um, I'm not, okay. As to your last answer, 
it was non-responsive, and I, for the record, I moved to strike. And that's not true, and I need to say, it was 100% responsive. The question was, were you terrified of Johnny Depp? And she gave a very thorough and articulate answer as to yes and why it was. So I completely object with your continual efforts to stop her from testifying and to wipe out what it is that she's saying. Ms. Hurd, um, is it true on May 26, I'm sorry, May 22nd, 2016, that you were, quote, in fear of Johnny terrorizing you at the Broad Broadway penthouse? Um, I, on May 22nd, did you say? Yes, that same Sunday we've been talking about. Uh, I was scared um, of what the part of Johnny Depp that is violent and abusive could do. I was terrified of that man. I need to take a break. My father's in the hospital and I'm getting a lot of phone calls from my family, so I need to take a short break. Of course. So Can we all remain here so we're ready to go when you're back? That's fine. Just don't ask questions. Of course. Just we'll like to go off the record. Are we were able to go off the record when he steps out? Uh, no. Okay, then you take your come. mic off and please don't say anything. Okay. You can walk out. You can walk out. Okay. Take it off. May I ask, uh, may we have other counsel step in? No. I'd like to give you as much time no. as possible. No, we've been going on for an hour. We haven't yeah. taken a break. I'm taking a break. I'm okay. having a family emergency here. Do you understand that, Blair? Please, please go and attend to it. Okay. I can use this as a bathroom break, too. Okay. The table mics will pick up your whispers. We can go off the record. Yeah. I don't think we can now without okay. their agreement. Just take off your mic and we can come back here. Are you ready to get back on the record? I'll go get her. We're, we're, we're still on the record. record. Oh, we're still on the record. Let the record reflect that Mr. Harder's back in the room and he's going to get his client. <clears throat> Where, 
where, where are the text. things? Where, where are the things I was just looking at? The text. Yeah. Okay. Can you remove those things from me? The Everything except the text. The text. The text. The Is there a way we can get anyone? Okay. Mr. Harder, are you still needing to attend to your family emergency? No, I'm fine, thank you. Can we um, begin? Uh, we're, we're still in the record. Yeah, she's in the ladies' room, and I can't go in there, so I'm waiting for her to come out.
May the record reflect that Ms. Hurd is back in the deposition room with her counsel, Mr. Harder, and I'm going to begin uh, questioning Ms. Hurd again. Is this a good placement for the uh, mic? Ms. Hurd, do you know who uh, the person, uh, Jerry Judge, is? Yes. Who is Jerry Judge? Head of security for Johnny. Or would it be fair to say he works closely with Mr. Depp? Yes. Would it be fair to say that you understand he communicates on a daily basis with Mr. Depp? Uh, assumes facts. Uh, calls for speculation. I, if have you know, I have no idea how often they communicate with uh, him, amongst, one, amongst one another. Okay. On, uh, let's say, the period May 22nd to which we were just speaking in May 24th, uh, did you believe that Mr. Judge was somebody who was communicating with Mr. Depp? It, it's, it, it, it calls for speculation. Um, I, I, I don't know how they communicate. Did you believe they were communicating, say, for this period, May 22nd? to May 24. Did right. you have reason to believe they were communicating? Compound, vague and ambiguous. It is calls for speculation. I, I truly do not know how often they communicate by themselves. Okay. On that Sunday when you had this phone conversation with Ms. Gottlieb, do you recall me asking you about this? I recall you asking okay. the question. And when you went to the birthday party that Sunday, that's May 22nd, do you recall us talking about that? I do recall that. Okay. And when you just testified that you were uh, petrified and terrified of Johnny Depp on May 22nd, 2016, do you recall that? Uh, wait. I was very clear in how I described um, uh, and who I described as being what I was afraid of. Okay. I was afraid of the monster. Okay. The, the part of Johnny that is unpredictable, erratic, and okay. abusive. Okay. Uh, is it true, Ms. Hurd, that on May 24th, 2016, you sent a text message to Jerry Judge? I don't remember. Okay. Showing you will be marked as Exhibit B. Um, do you recognize uh, what I'm showing you? Take a moment. Take your time. Do I recognize this? The Is contents of the text message, yes. Yes. Okay. And is that a text message that you sent to Jerry Judge on May 24, 2016, two days after you've testified you were terrified and petrified of Johnny Depp? <coughs> I specifically um, am, and was terrified of part of Johnny Depp. I lived with two individuals within one body. Part of Johnny, the part that I love is great and I was not afraid of that Johnny. The part I am afraid of is the Johnny that is extremely unpredictable, erratic, abusive, and is filled with rage and goes into manic episodes and is uncontrollable when in such states or appears to be in such states. And because he wasn't around me, I was unable to um, deduce or know for a fact what combination of drugs he was using. And that is specific to the kind of Johnny, version of Johnny, that I was afraid of. Objection, non responsive, move to strike. I objected as responsive. Ms. Heard. Did you send a text message to Jerry Judge on May 24, 2016, telling Jerry Judge, quote, I'm desperately trying to reach Johnny. It's extremely important. Please tell him. I remember sending the text message that is in front of me right now to Jerry, uh, and I would like I remember sending this because I wanted to tell Johnny or have him told by Jerry or someone who knew him or was close to him, basically I didn't want him to find out online, that I had or was about to file or I had already filed for divorce. I wanted him to know verbally. So I was trying to reach him through a third party 
to tell him. When I say reach, I'm specifically saying I would like him to know information coming from me or coming from Jerry, from me, so that he finds out about the divorce filing or my intention to do so from some other source other than TMZ, which was alerted. Ms. Hurd, it, does that mean, does your most recent answer mean that yes, you did send a text message to Jerry Judge on May 24, telling Jerry Judge, quote, I'm desperately trying to reach Johnny. It's extremely important. Please tell him, end quote. Asked an answer. I don't. Did you send him that text message, Ms. Hurd? Are you asking me if I sent him this text message? Yes. I, again, yes, I did. And you intended to send him that text message, correct? Again, I remember sending Jerry a text message in hopes that somebody could communicate with Johnny other than me because I was scared of him. I wanted someone to tell him that I was going to file for divorce so that he heard about it from a, one, another source other than me. So the truth was, I want to be clear, Ms. Hurt. So the truth was, you didn't want to speak to Johnny, you wanted a third party to speak to Johnny, correct? Or to connect us verbally. So that you could speak personally with, with Johnny? Depending on his state. On that same day, Ms. Hurd, isn't it the truth, on May 24, 2016, you sent a second text message to someone named Nathan Holmes? Yes. I mean, I don't remember, but um, showing sure. you what will be marked as respondent C. Do you recognize that text message? Take your time. What was your question? Do you recognize that text message? Vaguely. Is that? a message that you sent to Nathan Holmes on May 24, 2016. It appears to be if this is a screen grab from Nathan's phone and I am AH. Is it a true fact, Ms. Hurd, that you intended to communicate to Nathan Holmes on May 24th that you wanted Nathan to, quote, tell Johnny I need to speak with him, it's an emergency? That same day, isn't it a fact, Ms. Hurd, that the person you've just testified to on May 22nd, you were terrified and petrified of, you attempted to repeatedly contact on May 24, that being Johnny Depp? Asked and answered and argumentative. Did you try to contact Johnny Depp on May 24? I don't recall if I tried to contact him directly. I certainly uh, tried to get him information. And these um, two texts that you're showing me um, are me trying to get to people who I know are in communication with Johnny as an attempt to try to inform him that I was going to file or had filed for divorce because I wanted him to know from me or someone close to him from me that I had filed, as opposed to him finding out from TMZ or something like that. Is it true that on May 24, you sent a text to your husband, Johnny Depp, saying, quote, please call me when you can speak, okay? With all the love in my heart. I don't know if I sent that text message because I don't remember it, but if you show it to me, maybe it would help. showing you what will be a two-page exhibit marked uh, Respondents 5. Do you recognize... I'm sorry. D. D. Do you recognize uh, these texts? Take your time to review them.
Have you had a chance to review those texts? I have. Okay. Do you recognize those texts? Yes. Okay. Uh, and the texts in, in Respondents Exhibit D, are those texts that on May 24, 2016, you sent to your husband, Johnny Depp? Yes. Okay. And is it true, Ms. Hurd, that in that communication with your husband, Johnny Depp, you told him, quote, please call me when you can speak, okay, with all the love in my heart? I said that right before sent telling him, uh, reminding him that he passed out while we um, were speaking, and because he often ha passes out um, uh, after drinking a lot, I want to make sure that security is available to help him. And so in the text, I actually say, which you omitted right in, in verbally, but um, is part of the same text message. I said, um, you fell asleep while we were talking, which is a kind way uh, that we referenced uh, when we were fighting him passing out, um, literally while we were speaking. Um, and I had to call or, or text security to make sure that um, they checked on him so that he didn't fall asleep on his back and potentially um, and potentially hurt himself um, as people do when they fall asleep drunk and potentially vomit. And so I wanted I checked with security. I asked security to roll to check on him, which means roll him over on his side. And I wanted to remind him that we were speaking when he woke up so he could look at his phone and remember that we were in a conversation that was peaceful because sometimes he didn't remember the nature of our conversations and if they ended peacefully or not. And I wanted to remind him, hey, look, we were speaking. It, uh, it's important. It was about the divorce or um, divorce filing. And I wanted to make sure that um, he knew we ended on a good note, um, that it was peaceful, and um, that we needed to resume speaking because like I said, he passed out in the middle of the conversation. Non-responsive, move to strike. And I oppose that it is responsive. Ms. Hurd? I was are, in the text message, ma'am. Are you saying now that on May 24, you actually, prior to sending Johnny Depp a text message saying, please call me when can you can speak okay with all the love in my heart, you had already spoken to him on the telephone? I'm sorry, I didn't understand that question. I believe you were referring to a text message prior to the text message I was referring to that said, with all the love in my heart. Are you saying that on May 24th... It's the same text message. It's just, I mean, it's the same okay. communication. She's talking about this. Yeah, but it's a, she's referencing this. It's all one text. Okay. Let, let's be clear. Right. Did you Listen. send a text message on May 24th to Johnny saying, quote, you fell asleep earlier while we were talking. Did you send that text message? I sent this text message. What I just said? Mm -hmm. Okay. D when you said that to Johnny, were you referring to a telephone conversation you had been having? I believe so. Okay. When did you have I that telephone conversation with Johnny Depp? Probably Vegas the time. prior to that, uh, sending that text message. Okay. How far prior? I don't recall. Within the, would it be fair to say within 24 hours of referring to that? Calls for speculation. It would be fair to say that. Okay. But I'm not sure. Okay. But but certainly after May 21, correct? I can't I can't know that because this looks like it's right after midnight. This looks like this text was sent um, right after midnight. And is that the time stamp? Okay. Above it. That would be so. It would technically be if we spoke 33 minutes prior or 35 minutes prior. It would be technically the day before. Right, and that would be. Am I correct, Ms. Heard? May 23rd, 2016. Yes, but that would also mean that I uh, must have spoken to him within 35 minutes, and I cannot tell you if it was within 35 minutes or not of sending that text message. Of course. Therefore, I can't tell you if it's the same day. Of course. So that would mean that the truth would be that either on May 23rd or May 24th, 2016, you had a telephone conversation with Mr. Depp to which you were referring to in this later email. Is that correct? Calls for speculation. He spoke before this text okay. message. I just don't know how, 
how much earlier it was. Whether it was 30 minutes or two hours earlier. Is that fair to say? I think it's fair to say. I don't remember how far in advance okay. to okay. sending this text message. Okay. That we spoke Between the time you sent this text message and when the papers had been filed in court on Monday, is Monday, that would be the 23rd. Okay. Would it be fair to say that you had this telephone conversation to which you were referring in the May 24th text with your husband, Johnny Depp? Calls for speculation. So, what is that? You can answer the best you can. Uh, Ms. Burke, can you be clear to me I, I, sure. what you're asking me? Sure. You're referring to having a telephone conversation with your husband when you text him on May 24th, correct? I'm assuming, yes. Okay. I'm assuming it's in reference okay. to a phone okay. call, only because I'm, I reference security, so it means I probably am. You're saying you don't remember exactly when it was, correct? Mm -hmm. Is it true that it would have been after you had filed the papers in court for dissolution? Calls for speculation. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Was there any other reason you were trying to talk to your husband than the papers you say that you were concerned about? My principal reason for speaking with him was to inform him uh, in the most honorable and um, dignified way possible that I had to file for, I finally did it, finally filed for dissolution. So the intention of your speaking to him was to tell him if he did not know from the press that you had filed dissolution on Monday and that is why you called him, correct? Argumentative. I, I, I don't know why. Uh, you don't know why you called him? Excuse me. Argumentative. Ask and answer. Are you finished, Mr. Harden? Mm -hmm. Is that yes? Yes. Okay. Is it your testimony you do not know why you called him in the telephone call you referenced when you texted him on May 24th. Mistakes I prior testimony and argumentative and asked and answered. I feel I answered your question, Ms. Burke. I'm sorry, I am trying to be very clear. Okay. Isn't it true, Ms. Hurd, that you texted him again on May 24, um, 2016 and wrote to him, quote, please, please call me important. Just text me when you can for a minute. Can talk for a minute. Yeah, text me when you can talk for a minute is what I said. Did you communicate that to Johnny Depp on May 24th? Yes. Did you intend to communicate that to Johnny Depp on May 24th? Yes. Did you also text him Quote, please answer, I really need to speak with you, question mark. Please call me as soon as you get this, period. Hi, period. Can you speak? Please call me, it's important, please, emergency. May I see it? I of don't course. Know. I don't of remember course. off the top of my head every text message. What I mean, will text be marked as sent. respondents E showing uh, Ms. Hurd? Do you recognize those text messages? Take your time to review them. I will. Thank you. Make sure you see. Oh, right, right, of course. Okay. Yes. I see them. Did you th say those things to Johnny Depp, your husband, on May 24, 2016, two days after you say you were terrified of him? Uh, I was terrified of the monster and the monster's response. I was t terrified of the part of Johnny, the Johnny that hits me, the Johnny that I, I cannot control the response of the Johnny that would take such information like me filing and him learning about it um, through a third party uh, and, 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 
and have an unpredictable and potentially dangerous and terrifying response. That Johnny. I, the Johnny you were trying to talk to on May 24th. I was trying to um, text and uh, or speak on the phone with the rational sober Johnny hoping he would have woken up from when he passed out the next morning still trying to reach him hoping he wakes up and is somewhat sober and somewhat calm and therefore could process the information of me having filed for divorce in, a, in the pe most peaceful and rational way possible. I was trying to reach the good Johnny, the Johnny that I was married to in love. I wanted to communicate with him in the safest way possible and not compromise my safety. Therefore, I was trying to text him where there was a physical distance, trying to call him where there's a physical distance, and hopefully reach the Johnny that I did love very much, the Johnny that was the good Johnny, the sober Johnny, the one that would process this rationally and perhaps hear some legitimacy in it, the Johnny that I constantly was trying to save and, s and stay married to and salvage from within the other Johnny that is dangerous and erratic and scary and violent. Sorry. Are, Are you finished, Mr. I, w I was going to wait for you to finish talking. So is that yes, you did try to speak repeatedly with Johnny on May 24, 2016? I tried to communicate with what I could only hope to be the sober, rational husband, person that I love, not the other one that could possibly take this information and to, to, to no uncertain um, and per potentially very scary um, ends. Were you aware at the time you were trying to speak with your husband, Johnny Depp, or as you say, the, your husband that wasn't this monster, mm -hmm. At the time you were trying to repeatedly communicate with him on May 24th, were you aware that your lawyer had sent a letter to Johnny's entertainment lawyer, Jake Bloom? If, if you became aware through communications of counsel, it's privileged and I instruct you not to answer. If you became aware from some other means, then you can't answer. I take my, I take uh, Charles's advice. When you repeatedly tried to call and text your husband on May 24th, did you know that your lawyers had sent a letter to Jake Bloom if on you, your behalf? If you found out through communications of counsel, yeah. you, I instruct you not to answer. Okay. I will once again object to Mr. Harder's continuing uh, speaking objections and coaching of his witness. I'm, I'm not, I, I, just, I just have to clarify, I'm not coaching her, I'm just letting her know what the privilege is so that she knows what the privilege is. She's not a lawyer, she needs to be aware of what the privilege is so she doesn't waive it, that's all. Did you ever become aware that a letter had been sent to Johnny's entertainment lawyer, Jake Bloom? Same objection. And this is the third time you've asked the same question. And she's asked, answered it twice, so I'm instructing you don't answer. Did you... Um, ever develop a concern that uh, Johnny would be informed that you were uh, attempting to ask him for money? Vague and ambiguous. Unintelligible. I didn't understand that question. Well, as of May 24th, were you aware that your lawyer had sent, uh, had made a demand of Johnny for money? No. Wait. I just want you to be aware that they're asking you privileged information, so I, you can't oh, okay. waive the privilege. I'd also interject, as soon as facts not an evidence facts foundation. Were you aware of what, if anything, you had asked for in filing your dissolution on Monday, May uh, 23rd? If you learn from communications of counsel, it's privileged and don't answer. Uh, how else would I learn that information? How else would I learn that information? Ms. Hurd, you've testified mm -hmm. that you were aware that you'd filed for dissolution. Is that correct? Yes. Did you know what that was? Uh, 
Well, that's a complicated question because um, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not a lawyer and I don't know the law at all. And um, I still to this day ask um, questions sur surrounding the terminology in um, all of these uh, court proceedings. So if you ask me if I knew what it was, vaguely, but I don't know every detail of what that entails. Uh, did you read uh, the petition for dissolution before you placed your signature on it? Can you repeat wh uh, what document you're referring to? The papers that were filed in court on Monday to which you previously referred to as understanding were dissolution papers. And you're asking me what? Did you sign those papers before they were filed in court? Yes, I believe I signed them. Okay. When you say you believe them, you sign them, do you remember signing them? There have been a lot of documents that I've signed throughout this process. Okay. If you sign them, Ms. Uh, Heard, um, did you read um, what the contents of the document you were signing? before you signed it. S specifically referring to the tw um, dissolution? Yes. Um, I don't know, it was a very, it was a very, very stressful day. And I, I'm, it involved um, uh, emotion, it was emotionally a traumatic day and it followed a even more traumatic um, few days prior. And it was extremely, extremely, it was an extremely, traumatic and emotional day. I don't remember every detail of every word I read and every piece of paper I read. It was m one of the worst and most difficult days of my life. Non-responsive, motion to strike, everything after Ms. Hurd answered yes. And I, I object to that. I believe it was responsive. Do you recognize what will be marked as um, respondents F? Have you had a chance to review those documents? Yes. Do you recognize your signature on those documents? Yes, it looks like my signature. Did you sign those documents, Ms. Hurd? Yes, I did. Did you read those documents before you signed those documents? I can't recall if I read every word. Did you read any of the words? Yes, I'm sure. Did you believe when you signed those documents you were asking the court for dissolution of your marriage to Johnny Depp? Yes. Did you uh, want to do that? Yes. Did you authorize your lawyers to do that? Yes. Okay. Did you believe on the day you pay, filed those papers and signed those papers, 
you were seeking a domestic violence restraining order against Johnny Depp. What was your question exactly? It, Did you believe on, on Monday, May 23rd, that you were authorizing your lawyers to file and seek a domestic violence restraining order on that day, on that Monday? I, I believe so, yes, yes. You wanted a, a domestic violence restraining order on that day? I, yes. And that was the day before you were trying to talk to your husband, correct? I wanted to tell him, yeah. It was the day before I was trying to tell him, or I tried to tell him probably that day. You well. tried to tell him what? 23rd? No. Yeah. Um, somewhere around this time, I was trying to tell him um, so he didn't find out about it in, in the worst way. Did you believe that a restraining order against your husband, Johnny Depp, was going to be issued on Monday, May 23rd? I'm, I'm going to object. Whatever understanding you developed, if it was from counsel, you cannot answer its privilege. Then I cannot answer okay. that. On May 23rd, did you believe um, after court was over that a restraining order had been issued against your husband? I'm just going to object on grounds of privilege. Whatever you came to understand, if it was from counsel, you cannot answer it. So is it your testimony you were worried about his reaction to that? Wait, uh, vague and ambiguous. It's a different question also. Did you just testify earlier you said you were worried about something? Yes. What were you worried about, Ms. Hurd? Um, as always, with um, potentially, I worried about the backlash um, of my filing. I worried about the backlash he could um, have. Uh, it could have. Okay. But you'd already filed for the restraining order, correct? At what time? Monday the 23rd. So what's your question? Had you already wait, had no, wait, wait, wait. Okay, it's It's apparently an inaccurate date. Did you believe on Monday you had filed the restraining order? Anything that you came to learn from counsel, you can't answer its privilege. Okay. And can what's this? That's exhibit F. Just, just, just introduced as option. I just, I just, I just, I just, yes, I just want to get something in here because I'm allowed to. Uh, Blair, you said that you're not trying to trick her. If you're giving her the wrong dates, then you are trying to trick her. So let's just try to keep it all on the up and up. If you're inaccurate about something, apologize and clarify it so that we have a clear record here. Ms. Hurd, you just testified that you believed the papers you filed in court on Monday the 23rd of May 2016 were seeking a domestic violence restraining order, correct? I'm joking. I think I misstates your testimony. The restraining order hearing was on May 27th. Paperwork was filed that day. Non-responsive testimony by uh, the attorneys in the room moved to strike. I am very clear, Ms. Heard, that I heard you say that you believed you had sought a restraining order on Monday, May 23rd. Is that incorrect? Do you want to change that testimony? I don't understand what you're asking. Okay. As you were communicating repeatedly with Mr. Depp on May 24th, 2016, do you believe, did you believe at that time that there was already a restraining order? I don't remember when the exact date of the restraining order was filed. I'm not, a, I'm not asking you that, Ms. Hurd. Oh. I'm asking when you were communicating with your husband, mm -hmm. did you believe at the time you were communicating with him on May 24th that a restraining order had already been obtained? I don't remember. Okay. Um, you testified earlier when you reviewed uh, Respondents F. F. Do you re recall reviewing is those this, papers in detail? F? Yes. Wait, F is this. Sorry. Yes. Did you, so. Do you remember reviewing those documents? I do. Okay. Could you point to me anywhere in those documents which you signed where you were seeking a restraining order? Argumentative. I, I uh, what does that mean? What do I do? What does that mean? She'd like you to look at the documents. Oh, okay. And she'd like you to look for references to a request for a restraining order. So take your time and review the documents. Okay. The divorce petition. 
For the so, record, she's looking at Exhibit F, which is the summons and the petition for dissolution. Not domestic violence. Oh, this has this. I, I this so it's it's, it's, a, it's an argumentative, harassing, and confusing question. I don't and know. And she's what doing she exactly means. what she told you she wasn't going to do, which is to trick you. Um. So you're asking me to point out in here if there's any sort of reference to a restraining order, is that correct? I'm sorry, I'm just trying to understand. Yes, Do you, did you believe when you signed that document that the document we were signing was intended to secure a restraining order against your husband? Uh, let me just I, object. Okay. It's harassing, it's argumentative, and the documents f speak for themselves and it calls for a legal conclusion as to what the documents were seeking. Would you answer my question? I, um, as I said before, T, that was a very, very traumatic time and a very traumatic day. I believe by looking at the date, is this, where is the date on this? Oh, make me I believe that this was right after I had a um, uh, cell phone smashed into my face and um, was beat up and then had the cops enter my home, two sets of them, and then had um, engaged in a few days worth of a concentrated media attack against my character. So I was dealing with a lot. It was a very stressful time. Um, not to mention I um, had um, come to the conclusion I could no longer stay married to the monster, uh, even though um, there was also the good part of him deep, deep down, not even deep, part of him there. Um, so coming to all those conclusions while having the public um, aimed at you and, 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 and realizing you're um, in the middle of a, the early stages of a smear campaign, it makes things very stressful, especially when you have to go and file publicly something that is extremely embarrassing and private. And you, um, you deal with a lot in those moments. So I don't remember exactly what I took from um, seeing these uh, in that moment of seeing these and signing these. Okay. And uh, I just want to know the truth, Ms. Ms. Hurt. When you, when you said to Mr. Judge, I'm ju desperately trying to reach Johnny, mm -hmm. did you believe that you had already requested a restraining order? I don't remember if at that time I knew I had a restraining order or not. I don't remember the, sequ the exact sequence of the uh, exact timing of the sequence of events. I'm sorry. Okay. It was a very <laughs> stressful time. And when you were speaking with Johnny on the phone on May 24th, did you believe you had already gotten a restraining order? Wait, uh, I I, uh, wait, stop, stop. Uh, I believe that misstates prior testimony that assumes facts not in evidence. I apologize. When you were attempting to reach Johnny on the phone on May 24th, <coughs> did you uh, believe that you had already gotten a restraining order? I can't remember the exact sequence of events when thing, when certain filings happened. Um, I can't remember the, the what came first or, or when they happened. Uh, it was a very, it was the most stressful time of my life. Okay. Is it true, um, Ms. Heard, that on May 25th at 4.33, you sent Mr. Depp a text saying, quote, just confirm that cover letter is completely private and has nothing to do with any public record and only included the domestic violence restraining order stuff because I called the lawyer when the cops were here and I didn't know what to or why didn't know what to or why that happened and was scared, but that letter is private. And unless you file as well, which I guess opens up to the press possibly catching it, as they have seemingly missed this one, at least for right now, then it can be revoked any time. If you file separately as well, it's the same thing as far as being revoked is concerned, but both requires both signatures both our signatures and as a new filed public document for the records. At least that's my understanding of it. Oh, and I confirmed with my lawyer the quickly part, et cetera, you mentioned in letter between our lawyers, including the deadline for response from them, wasn't something I said, asked for, or even noticed. And it's not mandatory at all. We can take as long or quick as we want and do this or undo this if we want, um, as we see fit. You and I have the control and love each other. I thought you filed. You said you were going to and said goodbye. I'm sorry if I've hurt you. 
I have nothing but love for you. Assumes facts, not in evidence, and the May best evidence rule. I thought that was your question. You paused. Did Did you send that text? Assumes yes, wait. Assumes facts, not in evidence. Best evidence rule. The document's not in front of you. You're not looking at it. Right. May I Again, see it's it? trickery that she said she was not going to play today. Is there a reason you're not letting her see the words on the page that you're reading from? <laughs> Do you recognize what I just read to you? Vaguely. Okay. May I show you what will be marked as G. Exhibit G? Take your time. Would you please review that text for me? Sure. Can we actually mark these so that when, if we need to go back, we, we know what we're dealing with here? Because it's going to be hard for me to find them. Maybe during a break. <laughs> Blair, what was your question? Did you send the text that I just read on the record on May 25th, 2016 to your husband, Johnny Depp? Right, is the question, did she send Exhibit G or did she send all the words that you read? Did you understand my question? It's trickery. Yeah. She Can read to you, clarify? like, four pages that you weren't looking at, and now she's putting in front of you a document asking if you sent the words that she never showed you. Exactly. Objection. Uh, Counsel I, is testifying <laughs> and continuing speaking objections. Would I you do objection see, trickery. I do see on here, um, I didn't hear you say it. I'm, I'm sure you, I mean, I hope you did, but I, I specify here in my statement to Johnny, I say, um, uh, I don't know what to do or why that happened and was scared. And I don't remember, I mean, maybe I missed that. Ms. So Heard, is every word in G. Exhibit G, Respondents G, mm -hmm. uh, in the text described as coming from you, mm -hmm. words that you communicated to your husband, <coughs> Johnny Depp? Take your time. On to May review. 25th, 2016. as long as you need. Okay. It's a long text. Am I missing a page at the end? It just looks like it's cut off. I have, um, it stops it and I and do this or undo this, but it's cut off, so I Oh, I'm sorry, did I not? I, I don't, maybe you didn't mean, I mean, I mean, maybe you accidentally left a page out? Because this text message is cut off, and so undo I Undo, your last page is undo this? Uh-huh. Yeah, but it's clearly cut off, uh, there's... There's not, uh, the last page you have doesn't say from you called you back? No. Okay, this I'm this sorry. If I may uh, augment the record, the, uh, the complete exhibit has um, an additional page and, and continuing after undo this. Up until undo this, was th were those words that you communicated to Johnny Depp? Just take your time. You can review the whole thing if you want. Um, it's, well, um, it's cut off between page one and two, I believe. Um, it says, 
I, um, when the cops, uh, I, because I called the lawyer when the cops were called, uh, when the cops were here, and I didn't know what to do or why. That I, think, I think you'll notice that you're... I'm missing a page. I'm sorry. I think I'm missing a page. It goes from, I didn't know what to do or why. Didn't know what to do. Oh, it just oh, overlaps. Why that happened and so this would be this. And why mm -hmm. that happened. Mm -hmm. And was scared. Oh, so it does. So it says, I didn't know what, um, what to do or why that happened. Right, it goes here. Happened and I was scared. Okay, so there wasn't a missing page. You've sorted it, it out. It's just that they didn't. They it okay. just there was some overlap. And is it true you sent? But those there was a missing page at the end, and I just received and now that you from have you. that. Yes. Yeah. And, and is, are it. those words you? I haven't take, read it okay. yet. If that's okay. Sure. Why don't we take a break? We have a Great. media break. Uh, according to the reporter, we can take a brief recess while you put in new media. Is that okay? Okay. Thank yes. you, Mister. This marks the end of media number one in the video deposition of Amber Death. The time is approximately 12 or 3 p.m. and we're going off the record. All right, everyone, that wraps up this volume. I want to thank you again for watching and supporting the channel. Thank you for any comments down below. I really do appreciate it. Be sure to check back and turn on notifications for more parts, volumes, and other content as I continue on. So until next time, if there is a next time, take care.